Hi, everybody. This is Jeffrey from Ripe Color with my special guest, Shari H. from Voices from the Swamp, from lovely, lovely Louisiana. And this is Tarot Tuesdays. Welcome. <laughs> Hi, Shari. Hi, Jeffrey. <laughs> so uh, why don't you tell I'm us- down in the bayou. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit, a little bit about your YouTube channel and a little bit about you, whatever okay. you want. Okay. Um, well, I, I mean, I grew up, I always knew that I had a gift, so to speak. Um, all the women in our family do. Mm -hmm. No two have the same. It's like a little different for each person. Mm -hmm. And when I was about eight or nine, I guess, I, uh, uh, we, we we had traveled to Florida to visit friends. And when we walked in the house, I was like eight or nine. The first thing I said was, oh, I've been here before. Mm -hmm. Everybody's like, no, you've never been here before. And I'm like, yeah, I've been here before. And I proceeded to point out where every room was, whose room was who, what was in each room. And my mom just looked at me the whole time. And she says, oh, okay, you got the gift. And that was the end of the discussion. I didn't she didn't make a big deal about it. So it was like, no biggie. And <clears throat> through the years of different, I guess, aspects, things would hit me. Um, I think a lot of it more is just claircognizant. Mm -hmm. I just know things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, when I was much younger, four or five, I would hear a voice and I called it God. I thought God was talking to me. Mm -hmm. It was a deep male voice. Think. James Earl Jones, you know, or uh, uh, Darth Vader talking to you. That's the kind of voice. Um, and my grandmother or somebody would walk in the room and say, uh, who are you talking to? I'm like, I'm talking to God. They were like, oh, okay. <laughs> it just, it was like so blase mm -hmm. that it was never made a big deal. Mm -hmm. And then um, I kind of, I don't know, just regular life takes over and uh, my mom got uh, dementia real bad. And so we had all moved in together to take care of her. Mm -hmm. Me, my son, my brother and his son. So we could kind of tag team it. And then after mom died, a few months later, lockdown hit. And just farting around on YouTube, you know, trying to find something to, I was so depressed. It was not even funny. And I came across, uh, a YouTube uh, reader doing political tarot mm -hmm. from my point of view, you know, mm -hmm. a liberal political tarot. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know they did that. And yeah. watching her led to uh, uh, Sheila Celtic Tarot, I found. And then from her, that led to Linda G. And then I don't know, I'll lose track of yeah. who I saw next. I was just absorbing it. I spent the first year, I think, just watching and right. listening. I never chatted. I didn't interact with anyone. <clears throat> and then um, one night during uh, uh, when uh, Lisa and Sharon still had Nasty Women to Row. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who I've had both as guests. Yes. And I've also been on. They're both episode. hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Um, they were talking something about bras, bra sizes, whatnot one night on their show and I was had a crappy day at work and I'm sitting there and I'm listening to them and for the first time ever I jumped into chat and I just the zinger off the top of my head about you know hauling these puppies around you know just give that a shot and I got them both laughing and then at that point people started interacting with me because they knew I was there then mm -hmm. they didn't even know I was there before right and uh then before I know it, Lisa made me a mod. I was like, what the hell is a mod? <laughs> what do I do? Yeah, yeah. And uh, she was like, oh, just talk to Ron. He'll explain it to you. And I'm like, oh, okay. And um, I did that. It was like, as I would go into people's live streams, I would be blue. And I'd be like, oh, I didn't know I was a mod on this channel. <laughs> Somehow my name got around. Oh, she's a mod. You can click on her. Um, and then uh, last year, we moved away from the old place where we were, moved into the, uh, the new apartment where we're at now. And I was started seriously thinking about doing a channel. It was like, 
I was really feeling led. It just felt like it was something I was supposed to do. Yeah. And um, another reader had sent me a deck of cards, um, said, here, start with this and just kind of feel your way through it. And um, I was on uh, uh, Angel Feather Tarot, mm -hmm. Sheila, which is another name now. I can't keep up with her names. She keeps changing them. Um, I was in the in the chat one night. She was doing a live. Jeff, um, Jeffrey, Scott Allen, Spiritual uh -huh. Essence was her guest. And Sheila spotted me in chat. She was like, oh, Sherry, y'all got that hurricane coming. Is it coming at you or is it further away? And I was like, well, right now it's kind of coming right at us, but you never know until it hits where it's going to go. You know, it can... Right, right. It can move anyway. I said, I think I'm going to do like a video blog just every morning, go outside and show the weather like the crazy weathermen do. How hard can that be? And Scott was like, oh, you have a channel. And I said, well, I'm just starting it. And he was like, okay, everybody go to Sherry's channel right now and subscribe. I went from two subscribers to like 40 subscribers in about 15 minutes. I was like, holy crap. <laughs> I guess I got to put stuff up now. It's yeah. And um, I just slowly, just little bits here and there. And um, then I got invited on a couple of shows to come on and read, which was very intimidating because I felt like I didn't know anything. And slowly I've gotten comfortable. And now I'm starting to do my own shows. I've done three live streams now. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very nerve wracking, but it's also a lot of fun. Yeah. And um, I've done a few personal readings for friends. Um, I don't charge them any money because I don't think it's fair to charge somebody money when I'm learning. and I don't know what I'm doing. And um, I've just been taking it a little baby steps. It's one funny, step at a time. It's really interesting that you should tell this whole story because, you know, today, like our little thing today is about the, the hanged man and the hanged man is this energy of <clears throat> of sacrificing right it's a sac this self-sacrifice yeah and sometimes i think you know so many times we think we have this energy or this understanding of oh if i'm sacrificing means i'm giving something up that's good right oh if i'm sacrificing means oh i'm going on a diet or I'm trying to save money, or um, you know, whatever. You know, we always have this notion of sacrifice as being something um, exactly. negative, or oh, I, you know, I'm I'm um, making the hole bigger. But sometimes I think sacrifice can be I'm giving up a way of thinking that's limiting. Yes, that's what sacrifice can be sometimes, right? Oh, I'm giving up this way of thinking of, I can't do that. Maybe I need to give that up. Yeah. Maybe that's what I need to give and up. And that was one of my biggest, right? biggest, that was one of my biggest walls in front of me. Was, right. You know, I can't do this. I don't know this stuff. And, and I kept having readers saying, well, you know, you're psychic. I mean, I can see it on you. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> I right. don't know what that means. Right. And, but, that, um, yeah. and it was yeah. just slowly accepting what was being revealed to me right sorry my alarm went off time for my medicine i took it early um uh and so i still work a full-time job mm -hmm. and um but the sacrifice yeah as i was reading and studying on the hangman this week mm -hmm. and i was that was part of what surprised me of what i thought it meant and what you know, when you read on it, what it says it means mm -hmm, mm -hmm. versus the feeling I would get off of the card. Like I said, right. I had never pulled it on anyone yet. Mm -hmm. So I hadn't really thought about it intuitively. Mm -hmm. And I'm just now getting comfortable with yeah. going with what I feel as opposed to going to what the book says. Right. And that's just takes time. I know. Absolutely. And I think yeah. also a lot of us, we're, you know, different people approach things in a different way. I always like to compare it to like tuna fish, right? 
I know it's ridiculous, <laughs> but everybody it has their own little you. tuna fish recipe, right? Some people want carrots. Some people want celery. Some people want onions. Some people want a combination. Some people put pickles in it. Some people are like, oh, you have to serve it with lettuce. Oh, yeah. you have to, or, you know, here in um, Mexico, a lot of times they'll do it with avocado. So it, it's like, and they're all tuna salad. They're just different variations. All tuna salad, but we all have our own interpretation of the way it is. And I think also- It's like potato salad. I'm trying to do in this little, little vignette is to basically say to people, yeah, your interpretation is the right interpretation. Right. You know? And that's what I was learning this week, just kind of studying up on it. Right. And the different meanings, everything from the position of the person, mm -hmm. because they're only hung by one foot. Right. The other foot is free. Right. The hands are not bound. They're right. just being held behind the back. Right. And so depending on what deck you use and what artistic interpretation is put on that card mm -hmm. will depend on if they're on a beam, if they're on a live tree, mm -hmm. if they're just like, I have one card here. He's being held up by, I don't know if you can see it, by a fairy up in the, up in the air. I you wish know, I had a like, fairy to hold me up. Yeah, it's like I could probably use that. But <laughs> it also, it, the, the fact that it means it's just time to chill. Yeah. For a little bit. Yeah. Wait, let what happened happen. Right. And then kind of see where your bearings are and pick right. up and go from there. Right. And that was important when I read that. It was like, oh, okay, I get it now. Yeah. It's a holding pattern. It's like, yeah. just sit down, chill your jets. Right. You know, let whatever's going on work right. its way out. Right. And then go forward from there. Right. And it's also sometimes, the, it's, sometimes it's like, um, sit long enough and let the answer come or let more be revealed. Or, you know, sometimes yeah. let's say you're watching an, a, a drama that's not inside of you or something that's so super <clears throat> upsetting. And it's like, I just need to like sit with this for a while until I get clear, until I yeah. get feeling, until more information is revealed, until, you know, it's like- Yeah, that. exactly. And I know with me, because I'm a multitasker, I, I tend to be doing things left, right, left, right, left, right, go, go, go. And for me to put on the brakes and stop. Right and say, okay, let's think about this. Yeah. That's something that I'm in the process life-wise of learning to do. Mm -hmm. I always feel like I, I think I, I <laughs> for some reason, um, I always end up getting the right guess for the right card. It just ends up like that. There it you go. Ends up like that. So, um, so talk to me more about the hangman. Talk to me more about what else you think is really going on there? Where, where you think it could fit or not fit and how to, I don't know, talk more about it and then I'm going to talk more about it. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess the biggest thing I was, I was getting from it is that this is a person who has purposefully put themselves in timeout. Yep. They're not being forced. They're not being drugged. They're not being hung. You know, they're not, it's, it's not, a punishment, so to speak. And it's somebody who finally gets it in their head that, okay, I need to step back and think about this for a minute. I need to gather more information. I need to kind of see where, where the land lays as far as what's happening around me, mm -hmm. um, which can be scary because as just human beings, we tend to want to go in and tackle it. You know, let's go in and deal with this, take care of it, mm -hmm. do this, do that, do the other. Um, I'm infamous for that because I'm a control freak. Um, but it's learning to say, okay, let's just take a breath. Mm -hmm. I think that's, I've had several people in the last couple of months, as I've been slowly starting to do more shows, say to me, you know, just just take a deep breath. Mm -hmm. Just take a deep breath and relax a minute, you know? And it's like, 
yeah, I get, okay, well, you're right. I need to step back and take a breath, you know, and then, then you get hit with the other side with people saying, well, no, you need to push it. You need to go. You need to do this. You need to do that. I'm like, you know what? I'm not doing it for numbers. I'm not doing it for money. I'm doing it because I feel like it's something I'm supposed to do. Yep. But at the same time, it's fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it stops being fun, I'm going to stop doing it. Right, right. And it's also, you know, you know it's... it's and hopefully a, I help somebody along the way. Right. And it's a learning lesson, you know? Yeah. I and think I'm learning more from it than... And there's a season for everything, right? Yeah. There's a season in our lives to uh, plant a garden. There's a season in their life to take care of others. There's a season in life to um, go after a creative project, whatever it is. And right. All different times and moments in our lives. And it could be a few weeks, it could be a few months, sometimes it's a few years. Sometimes it's 15 minutes and it's like, I knew this wasn't going to work for me and I'm never going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you got me on that one right there. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, 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 um, I mean, I just turned 61. So first off, it's like, damn, I didn't think I'd last this long. And, um, and then secondly, it's, it's like, that's kind of good because I'm not ready to go yet. Yep. I still feel like I got a lot of things to do yep. that I'm meant to do. Um, and now I'm just at a point where I'm just enjoying discovering it all. Beautiful. It's like a game. It's like, oh, what's going to happen next? Yeah. What am I going to learn next? Yep. What gift is going to open up for me next? Yep. And suddenly I am hearing and not just knowing. Right. Or I am seeing something and not just right. feeling it there, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, and so now it's exciting. Mm -hmm. Whereas before to think about such things was scary. Mm -hmm. Long time ago, it would, it would frighten. Well, also, I think when we're in our thirties and our forties, the, the head is different and it's like, oh, yeah. I got to get this done. I, I have responsibility. Busy raising a family. Uh, and I, well, also, I think, you know, I think in, in younger years, we're more um, comparing ourselves to others. Mm -hmm. and it's like, well, you have that and I want it too. Or, right. you know, I think there's that thing going on. Oh, definitely. Yes. And I think as you get older, I mean, my experience is it's sort of like, I don't have to answer to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. You know? I do what makes me happy. I do what um, what serves me, what what uh, makes me comfortable. What yes, no, it's exactly. a little bit like that. Exactly, but, it's like mm -hmm. I'm 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 as I'm learning to just chill with things. At the same time, it's it's that ability to um, to know that there's lots more to come. There's right. no need to rush. Right. Well, that's really the, the it's whole time for me to receive it or experience it. Right. I'll deal with it then. Right. Well, and that's yeah. been a breakthrough for me. But I think that's also like the energy of the car. Yeah. Exactly. So, so let me, I, I could go so deep on this card. You have no idea. Okay. Go, go. <laughs> right. I'll so, learn. Okay. This is Odin. This is Odin. Yes. I read that. Right. This is Odin on the tree. So it's an outlier because I it's the only place stuff. <laughs> that Norse mythology comes into the Tarot. Right. And it's so interesting that it comes between <laughs> justice and death. It comes in that time of year where it's mm -hmm. like it's fall. So things are changing. Things are like disintegrating. Interesting time of year for it to come. Okay. Right. So what's what's fascinating and i think like the thing to really take in about this card is he's sacrificing himself to himself yeah he's sacrificing himself to himself well put that's that's kind of what i was really profound up. and it's like but i didn't know how to phrase it yet so there's this there's a sense yeah. of the death of the ego yeah, a sense of, I thought I knew, but now I realize I don't know. Yeah, because when you're 20, you think you know everything. Right, and I, I, I now I realize I don't know. 
So I'm going to gouge out my own eye. It really goes on and on. <laughs> and I'm going to put myself on the tree of life. Because you see what happens is with Odin, but Odin has the gift of prophecy. And he's looked at very strangely because that's a feminine gift. So he's looked at very strangely. But instead of saying, oh, no, I'm not like that. Oh, I'm not really like that. He doubles down and he, he gouges out his own eye and sacrifices himself to himself in order to see things in a new perspective, in order to say, spirit, what would you have me do? What would you have me see? What would you have me understand? What would you have me? That's what's going on in this car. Yeah. I'm going to stop. And it's I'm funny you're saying like that because I, I just what read I that. thought. Yeah. And what and where I stand in society to say exactly. what's bigger than me? How can how can I how can I get in touch with the part of me that's bigger than just being part of this? It's yeah. really a deep part. It's yeah. really deep. Yeah. And and what happens is he becomes illuminated. Yeah. He becomes yeah, like illuminated. This one, it's the rainbow he's on. I don't know if you can see it. Pretty. He's surrounded with the rainbow. And yeah. Whereas others, it's just the illumination around the head. Right. So, right. Um, and to, to tune into the rainbow would mean to see all, the spectrum of all there is. Right. 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 To Having to be able to see rainbow, all those colors. Like, Oh, I'm going to go into the yellow energy and the blue energy and the pink energy and the, and I'm going to take it all in. Yeah. And, um, there's an energy of um, pause of seeing things in a different angle from a mm -hmm. different angle of of seeing things. And you know, we we're talking about sacrifice. So a lot of times we think, like I said earlier, oh, I have to sacrifice this. I have to sacrifice this. But sometimes I think it's like. You know, maybe my whole life I've seen myself as not being able to do something or not having a skill or not having an experience or not having the, um, oh, I can't learn a new language. I can't learn a new skill. I can't ask for what I want. I can't, all these can'ts that we put on our, in our, in our, you know, heads. Yeah. And it's like, Maybe if I stand and sit upside down and receive messages and understanding and intuitive understanding from spirit, it's like, but if it was put in front of you to learn it, maybe you can learn it. Maybe I need to give yeah. up this idea of I can't. That's that's the biggest thing right there. Right. Is getting past that point. And then, like I said, and I think that comes with age. I mean, yeah. Even 10 or, years or ago. experience, you know, because I, yeah. I don't want to dis that's dis true. I mean that there are people who are 20 who are really wise. Right. Yeah. An old soul or somebody that's just been through stuff that right would horrify most of us, you know, and they right. just it they look at the world in a different aspect. I mean, I see that with my son after he spent five years in the Navy, two deployments. He came back with different perspectives on things yeah. than when he left and went in. Right. Um, I see that I work at a university, so I'm surrounded by college kids, which is great. I love it. Um, and it's watching them discover how to do things on their own. Mm -hmm. No longer relying on mama and daddy right. to take care of it. Now our freshmen, as they come in, they got helicopter mom hovering right there. Right, wanting right. to run the show right and we have to tell them i'm sorry i can't give you that information or i can't tell you this that without your child here to get permission right. because they're an adult right and that's you know that's breaking code <laughs> which really ticks off most parents yeah i'm sure they don't like being told that but hey that's you know that's just the way it is yeah. but what's exciting is seeing these young minds who are trying to absorb everything that's going on around them and how some of them are, you know, they're doing this, doing that, do the other. They're jumping into all of these groups and programs and keeping themselves just 
constantly going. And it's like, well, you're missing the whole point of college of gaining that experience before you, you're going to be doing that in a few years in life. Yeah. You know, have yeah. fun right now. Now's the time to absorb and have fun. Yeah. What I really love is the foreign students we get because I work in computer science. Mm -hmm. The majority of our student body for our department are all foreign. And it's watching them not just trying to discern what's the best move for them to make away from mama and daddy, mm -hmm. but in an entirely different country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a different culture. Yep. And when I first started working there, I had a young lady who would come in and she really, really didn't want to do computer science. She was into fashion design. Mm -hmm. She wanted to be a fashion designer mm -hmm. and create clothes. And I said, well, why don't you just change your major and do that? She was horrified. She said, my father pays for school. I can't do that. And I said, well, if you told your father that you don't like computer science, that you want to study this, oh no, he told me this is what I would study. Yeah. And I said, and young lady from India, so that's very- I know, very all the Asian, culture. Um, right, from all And I had to wheel very... myself back in, right. you know, and tell her, well, okay, so you're learning this in school. What's to stop you from learning the other? on your own. I said, you know, there's lots of information online. Right. You should know you're in computer science. I said, also, I said, why don't you just have a discussion with your dad? I said, you could at least talk to him and tell him how you feel. Right. Maybe a compromise can be worked out. Right. And that was such a foreign concept to her. Yeah. I've talked to my father to maybe change his mind. And semester ended. Summer rolled in, and, you know, most of them all go home for summer. She came back in the fall. She came by my office ecstatic because she talked to her dad and told him what she really wanted to do and how much she hated doing what she was studying. Mm -hmm. And he said, okay, let's compromise. You study this lower type of, a more versatile type of computer science rather than uh, coding and software writing and all that. And at the same time, you can take some of these classes in this other area that you're really interested in. And maybe they'll complement each other. other. You know, maybe it, the combination of the two, knowing a little bit of both, she's going to be able to take the computer stuff and put it into fashion, put the fashion stuff into the computer and maybe make yeah. a whole new thing, right? Exactly. It's her tuna salad. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But it just made me feel so good after the fact to realize that my immediate back went up when she first said, oh no, I can't do that. My father said, I'm like, well, <laughs> tell your father, you don't want to do that. And I had to stop myself and go, wait, wrong culture. These aren't Americans here. They're used to just doing what I think, you know, very strict cultural rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that they have to follow. And that. it was just really, it was very pleasing for me to see that she uh, took what I said and then went and took to talk to her dad, you know, and he was willing to compromise once she opened up about it, you know. And um, like I told her, I said, you know, after you get your degree and you go off and make lots of money, what's to stop you from coming back and getting another degree in fashion design? Right. Because then you'll be on your own, making your own money. You could pay for your own college. Right. I never thought of that, you know. So, yeah. and uh, it's one of the things I love about working with all the students. It's just, you know, they'll come in with very set perceptions and it's getting, and I'm just now realizing it fits with the hangman. Yeah. Getting them to stop, take a breath, step back and reevaluate. Well, also, I think that where when, am I at? Where like am I when we personally stop or say, it's it's really like you're going to, in a certain way, it's really like going to your higher self or spirit or God or whatever you want to the angels 
and saying, what's needed? Yeah. What's needed? What's for my highest good? What's, um, how can I live in the most light? Yeah. You know, what's, you know, because what happens, you know, at the end of the story with him is that that's when he creates the runes. Ah. After that, he creates the runes. I didn't know that. Yeah. And what, he, wants, he goes deep into all the realms and he absorbs all the realms of uh, like the spirit world. Yeah. And he, he absorbs he all the infinity all. stones. Yeah. But he absorbs them all. And then the love that he feels from, from all the higher realms, he, um, he sends out into the world. Yeah. It's a really, really beautiful story. Much like what Buddha did. Right. A very wealthy prince. Right. Who gave it all up and went and lived in the street as a beggar to understand the other perspective. Right. Right. To take you it all. And um, I feel like that's kind of the stage I'm in right now is the kind of sit, take a breath. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not all about job related. Um, it's not all about getting this done or that done or the other done. It's like the more I'm learning about the cards and I'm able to incorporate them into my life. Yeah. The more I feel like I'll be better able to help someone else. Right. Well, because further all, down the road, all mirrors of one another and the more I'm able to stop and allow myself to sacrifice, you know, things that are, or, you know, the more I'm able to stop and sort of let like spirit guide me, the more I'm an example to others, or I can say to others, why don't you just like relax? Yeah. Let's see what happens or, you know, and, um, because if I'm able to do it for me, I'm able to do it for you. And if you're able to do it for yourself, then you're able to do it for me. Because we're all here to, you know, hold each other's hands. Yeah, exactly. Sing songs, eat pie, you know, all the yummy. And ice things. cream. Ice cream. <laughs> and chocolate. <laughs> and chocolate. And then you're like me, you're as wide as you are tall. But... <laughs> I walk everywhere. You have no idea. I walk everywhere. Uh, it's, I have a messed up, badly messed up back from an accident. And so walking is very painful for me to do. Mm -hmm. I'm now at the point where I have to use a cane mm -hmm. all the time because I lose my balance really easy. I had four vertebrae fused in my neck. So I got a steel rod and screws holding my head up, you know, but hey, I can turn my head. Yeah. I couldn't do that before the surgery. Good. So, um, but it's, I feel like as I've contemplated this over the week and you talking about walking just made me kind of put it together. A lot of with the issues of my back getting worse, having to use my cane all the time now, I'm now going places slower. Mm -hmm. I'm not rushing, rushing, rushing in and out, in and out, running here and there. Mm -hmm. I now have to, I'm been forced to take my time. Mm -hmm. Slower steps, smaller steps, take mm -hmm. your time. You're going to get there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what you see along the way, you would have missed. Right. Had you been rushing. Right. <clears throat> right. And that's exciting to me. Is just right. Right. All that I could have missed. Yeah. Because I was so busy doing. Yeah. That I wasn't living. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yep. And, and I think that's a lot of what he yeah. represents is someone who's taken themselves out of the rat race mm -hmm. and stopped doing so he could figure out what's the next step. Right. How do I help the next person? Right. How do I help myself? Right. What's the next lesson to learn? Right. And um, that's interesting. I didn't know that about Odin. Yeah. And, you know, it's... Um, more in my like when i'm really on the beam so to speak uh and i have been for the past few days i mean you know i might give it up a, a day you know next week but i get to talk to i get to talk all day 
and and like commune with God. And I, I get to, and you know, really lately I've been like, guide my thoughts, guide, guide my words, tell me what to do, show me the next thing to do, instead of like, oh, because you know, there's a lot like I I I need to like get accomplished here. And and then um the more I do that, the more stuff just shows up. Or I yeah. get ideas or like the right people show up and say, hey, how about ba ba ba? And it's like, oh, okay. And you know, a lot of times it's really uncomfortable doing new stuff because it's like we get the way we are, and you know, well, I can't do this, yeah. I can't do that, and ba ba ba. And um um like the especially because i'm in a different country you know um that will open your eyes when i went from louisiana to phoenix that was culture shock for me yeah because i'd been on the gulf coast from texas to florida my whole life yeah furthest north i'd ever gone was tulsa oklahoma i mean you know so going out west was very eye-opening yeah but at the same time, it was it was very fulfilling because I went right after my husband died. Mm -hmm. It was like, I just need to go somewhere where nobody knows me and just see, can I survive on my own? Right. Because I went from being someone's daughter to someone's wife to someone's mother. Mm -hmm. And suddenly it was like, well, who am I? Right. I didn't have an answer to that. Right. And, and it was, yeah, it I, was hard, I, but it was the best decision I ever made for myself. Me, I'm discovering all these new things about myself too. And also, yeah. you know, the culture is different here and I am, you know, all about adjusting to the culture here. I don't like, I'm an American <laughs> and this is the way it is. Like that doesn't really fly. Yeah. Cause you always struck me as just such the stereotypical New Yorker. Well, I am. Because it's <laughs> the way you talk, the way you, you read cards when I would watch you, I'd be like, if I ever go to New York, Everybody's going to be like that. You know? <laughs> I know really that's not that. true, but that's no. just how you think. And so it's been nice to watch you become this mellower person. Well, I mean, it, the there. place the place has an effect on me. And also, there's not much of a choice. Like a, a yesterday, there's a restaurant really close. And they're nice to me. And the food is good. <clears throat> and it's never really crowded. And I always go sit on the roof. So they were like maybe two or three other customers in the whole place. And I ordered an omelet. It took 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. I could have laid the egg. I was going to say what they do, go, go have to lay an egg. <laughs> but like, I, I'm just, that's the way things are here and I'm used yeah. to it. And it's like, I had to meet somebody say at two o'clock. So I got to that place before one, because I knew. Yeah. Because I knew. Exactly. You know, and it's as not the hustle they, bustle of New York. Like as they finally bring in the food and they tell, they come and tell me three times, oh, we're working on it. It's like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's just an omelet. <laughs> and I'm just scrolling, you know, I'm like, like, whatever, you know, all the pretty pictures that people are putting up. Okay. But as they brought the eggs, I was like, can I have the check? Yeah, might as well ask for it now. <laughs> How fast did they get that to you? <laughs> that I said they were they they were like, oh, I guess he needs to be somewhere. It's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but still anyway, linger over my food today. <laughs> the omelet was good. They gave me a little salad and some refried beans and some little like croutony things. Yeah, it was good. Fresh orange juice. And then I got and did what I needed to do. So I, you know, I have to adjust. Yeah. I have to adjust. And part of it also has been good for me because it's like, I've got to, um, or I've had the opportunity to appreciate things on a slower and to see things in a different way and to get more messages. Well, yeah. Cause you, I mean, you had one hell of a stop in your tracks yeah Pay attention <laughs> yeah. you know most people don't have it hit them that drastically yeah like what happened you know with you yeah and um because i remember when the news first came out and the first thought in my mind was oh my god is he okay 
Right. The stuff can be replaced. Absolutely. Is he okay? You know, well, you know, and honestly, there was a moment, and this is really interesting. I don't know if I've said this online, but you know, it was early in the morning. I had just woken up anyway, and I hadn't slept really the night before. And then, you know, you kind of realize it's happening, and you know, you're there's part of you that says, This isn't happening. This this yeah. is like too I like I this is not happening. Yeah. And then, you know, at the same time, it's like, it's happening, it's not happening. And um, <clears throat> I was kind of fighting. I was trying to go and get stuff. I didn't know what the hell I was going to get. Yeah. I, I wanted, I didn't even know where it was. Yeah. And, um, and I'm like this, with the black smoke coming in by the window. And, and I think because I, I have a meditative practice, it was like something uh, like, this sort of came in and said, you want to live, you want to die. Yeah. Like, what's, what? What's like, it, it's this, that is, important. this is, this is what it's coming down to. Yeah. It's not like you're going to a restaurant. It's like, do you want this dessert? Do you want that dessert? Do you want, it wasn't like that kind of choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a more immediate choice. And it, and it was like really clear. It's like, I want to live and it, out the window. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I remember when it happened and, and, uh, taking stock a couple of days later just sitting here thinking oh my god if that happened what would i do yeah you know what would be my first inclination of things to grab right to go out the door right and my first thought was my medicine <laughs> because i can't survive without it and my second thought was my mom because i have two urns with her ashes right one for me one for my brother right and it's like, that would be the most important things for me yeah. to grab. And animals, you know. Right. And if I didn't have time for any of it, the animals. And then I would go, you know. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, with two dogs and a cat, they'd, they'd probably beat me out the door. But, you know, it's still making sure everybody else is out, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, just, uh, I just saw a video just the other day. Pizza man delivery. Mm -hmm. Pizza delivery guy. Driving down the road to deliver a pizza, saw flames coming out of a house. He stopped his car. He ran to the house, banged on the door, woke him up. And there were like five kids in the house. Wow. And he ran in and got every child. Wow. He went in and out several times. Wow. But he got all the kids out. This was a young man who was out delivering a pizza, yeah. for God's sake. Yeah. And wound up having to go into the hospital himself wow. from burns and smoke inhalation. But as the parent said, there is nothing that he can never ask for that we won't give him. Yeah. Because he rescued our children, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh and I and, think a lot of know, and and that's and that's the interesting thing. I think it really is about um this energy of stop, look, listen, hear, smell. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because this week the whole message has been for the collective and even really and I, I just did all the individual signs and my my whole feeling lately has been that everyone has an intuitive something everyone because you're a human mm -hmm. just part of who you are you know we all get it in different ways and some of us might hear it like you know what I mean like yeah, we can play the flute. Some, the way. some people are going to play it. It's like, oh my god, and some people are going to play it like, oh yeah, yeah. But we can all play the flute in a way. I don't know how to put it. Um, and I feel like there's this energy now of um, because we live in such a in a world that things can change so quickly. So, right. Oh yeah, we're all going to have to really rely on our own understanding, our own intuition, our own connection. With our own soul, with 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 um, with God, with the angels, with the guides, we all going to have to um, uh, develop that. Yeah, you know, and also like let go of this. Oh, I don't have any, any intuitive quality. I I don't have any artistic ability. I don't have any. It's like yeah, you do. We all yeah. do. We we all have it. Some of us have I it. Just, I just finished a four class uh, session with Danny Shea, uh -huh. bathroom tarot. Uh, he did on shamanic journeying. Uh -huh. 
And it was eye-opening for me in a lot of ways. It was like, oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't know I could think of it in that way, you know, or um, I wound up part of it. He was like, well, it's good to have a rattle so that you can change the energy. I'm like, I don't have money to go buy a rattle. Didn't know where to get one. There you go. So I made one out of a pill bottle, Beautiful. <laughs> a towel and some Beautiful. gemstones I had. Yeah. And it's great. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed it to him. He was like, oh, that's genius. And I'm like, yeah. I didn't know what else to do, you know, but um, yeah. it's it's a blast. To and now it's totally hear. yours. And it's, yeah. you really own it in a way that if you went and bought it at a store. It won't be the it. same. Right. Yeah, exactly. Right. And it's like, and, you know, maybe one doing... day when you have like, you know, I don't know, an extra 10 bucks, you want to buy a beautiful ribbon to put on it then do that. You know what I mean? But I have some of my, my mother was uh, sewed and quilted and all that. Okay. I don't, but I have, I, you got most stuff. of that stuff we gave away to other people. We know that sew and quilt. Right. And what, uh, but I kept a handful of some of the materials. Right. And I know that she really liked and that I really liked. And it's like, okay, I got to go get the box out of the closet. Yeah. So I can cover it and make it look pretty and, right. you know, and, and do this, that, or the other. And, right. and bring her uh, energy into it. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Beautiful. And, uh, so um, it's just a matter. And then it was, um, cause Danny was talking about, you know, a rattle or a drum. It's like, well, I don't have either one. And I was bitching about it. I guess you could say to my son, you know, where the hell am I going to get a drum? He says, mom, these are the drummers. He said, you bought me a drum in Mexico 20 years ago. So he still had it. <laughs> and so he dug it out. I was like, oh, wow, cool. I have a drum. See? And I was like, wow. I didn't even know. Wow. I, this whole, I don't even whole remember buying that. Our whole conversation was all like all that. It was like, oh, everything putting into place. Beautiful. Yeah. It, so just, let me ask you something. Is there, a, um, a, do you go on, a, do you on your channel, or do you have like a, a schedule? Do you go on every Monday or every? No schedule. Okay. No schedule yet. Right now it's kind of seated by the seat of my pants. All right. You know, I get, um, uh, especially to do a live stream or something, it's just kind of, I'll, I'll start, I'll see someone or I'll hear someone and I'll think, I want to talk to this person. I, I just did a live stream yesterday uh -huh. with a lady named Gertrude, who was a nun for almost 10 years. Wow. And now channels the Raja Shah. Uh -huh. And uh, very interesting, very nice. She's from Malaysia. And mm -hmm. um, from Malaysia. She's uh -huh. from Malaysia. Um, and just very sweet. And it was just so, it was like when I ran across her, and I went and watched a couple of videos. And then I started taking that shamanic class with Danny. And me, who can't meditate for five minutes without feeling like I'm going to jump out of my skin because I, I haven't been able to get my brain to shut down long enough to do that. Mm -hmm. And it was like between the two of them, everything was kind of falling in place. Mm -hmm. So I emailed her and I said, I would really like you to come on my channel and do a show. Beautiful. He said yes. And so we did it yesterday. We had a blast. Right. Um, so right now it's just kind of as I feel the urge to do it. Right. Then I'm going on. Um, I've been doing a lot of other people's shows that'll write say, hey, will you come on my show? And I'm like, I'm there. You know, tell me what time. If I'm not at work. I'm your girl. So. Right. Um, and like I said, I'm just slowly baby steps one step at a time beautiful and uh so nothing but right now i'm working on end of august is my one year channel anniversary of when i put my first ones out happy so anniversary all will all be getting emails happy <laughs> channel anniversary thank you see and we make we'll we'll be getting an email language then you can pop in five minutes ten minutes however long and just come celebrate and i will yeah, I'm, everybody's getting one. So right. definitely you. You were like on the top of my list. Thank you. So um, 
Yeah, because I've been following you for a little over a year now. So thank you. And I love your stuff. Thank you. And uh, I enjoy it. I get a lot out of it, you know, because a lot of times you'll put it in a perspective that I haven't thought of before. Hmm. Again, that step back and wait. Maybe yeah. what it is saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never thought about it that way before. And so that's one of the things I like about watching Nancy Jean mm -hmm. is she'll put things in a way that it's like, I well, never thought I really, you know, that's what I really, that's what Tarot Tuesdays has really been fascinating for me because my plan is to have 78 readers. And so I have like, I get to, I really get to watch every single one because I'm there. And, right. and it's like people, you know, different people have different interpretation of certain cards. And I'm like, wow. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. then that becomes, that's like sitting around in my subconscious because for me, when I pull cards, like, you know, like I'll be in the middle of reading and I'll say, okay, you know, like I'll pull him up and I'll say, okay, it's time to pause or another day I'll pull him up and I'll say, you're illuminated or another day I'll pull it up and I'll be like, you got to give something up. And then another day I'll pull it up. Right. You know? Because there's so many different intuitive meanings to yeah. that card. Yeah. Right. And, um, and it's also it's and that's what I'm learning to do right now is right. how to not stop and take out the book, which right. is what I'm saying it means. Right. I still have my cheat sheet with just little crib notes for different cards. Right. That if I look at it and if I'm not feeling something right away, I could just kind of glance at it and go. Right. So like, yeah. okay, that's kind of what that means. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Right. So we're throwing cards. La, la, la. I'm not even going to do them. And then, okay, so I, I, so like I start with this and I go, okay, this is about the divine um, loving energy, the beginning of something, maybe a new relationship, a new sense of love that might be overseas, like this just came, right? That might be overseas, but you have to wait. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. short and to the point. One leads into the next, into the next. And sometimes I'll be like, Let's say I'm I'm, I'm um, interpreting this as overseas, right? I'm interpreting this as somewhere else, a, a new right. new um, venture, a new um, outlook, and it's like, well, what's the new outlook? So the new outlook is a spiritual outlook. The new outlook, see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, because sometimes I'll ask the, the one card the next question. Exactly. Some, I'll ask the next. That's the what. That I'm in. What's the next question? I'll say why, where, how, who. And that's what I'm teaching myself. Here it is. Um, right now, I had uh, started with like the three card spread, like we were talking about right, past, right. present, future. Right. I was like, okay, well, that's fairly simple. You know, it's right. It doesn't take a big brain to figure that out. But I found another one that's a five card spread. Mm hmm. And so you've got where you are now, what's your next step? What's your obstacle? What are your strengths and resources? And what's the potential outcome? Right. And I started, and right now it's just myself I'm pulling on or something I see or hear on the news. Right. That I've been pulling and just trying to get into that flow of looking at the five cards laid out and going, oh, okay, well, you started here, you're doing this. This is something that's going to help you because you've got a lot of strength in this. Mm -hmm. And this is a possible outcome if you keep on the path that you're on. Mm -hmm. You could have a different outcome if you change something, you know. Also, when I'm throwing cards, let's say I'm, let's say I throw five cards, right? I'll also, I'm just going to take a quick look at those cards and say, what do they have in common? Yeah. Right. Now, yeah, see, like, that's like, what I've been learning for the, myself. Are the colors yes. similar? Is there is the is it a clear sky in all of them? Is it? Does it? Seem I never clear? thought of that. Are they in the dark? I never thought of it. Looking What's at going it. on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going? On? You and just then, had a light bulb go off over that, my head there. That whole energy will be like, oh, that's what's going on, right? Yeah. Or. Uh, sometimes I also, when I was first learning to do cards, and if there would be characters in the cards, 
Are they looking at each other? Yeah. Do they get along? Yeah. Is, is everybody looking one way and then there's this one outlier? And is the outlier the most important one or does it like kind of not matter? And I have to interpret that. And that, I mean, that's how, and you learn as you right. learn. Exactly. And I'm, I haven't, I don't think I've quite graduated myself up to that stage where I'm thinking in terms of, is the sky blue in all of them? Are they all in the dark? Are they all looking the same direction? Are they all, um, <clears throat> when I started doing the three card spread and then I switched over to Oracle cards and I'd shuffle, I'd pull one, and shuffle, pull two, shuffle, pull three, and then flip them over to see what I got. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the same deck. Sometimes I'll mix up the decks. And it's funny how all three, it took me a couple of times before I realized all three cards go together. Mm -hmm. No matter where I drew them from, mm -hmm. different decks or not. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, it's, they're telling me a story. And it's my job to interpret that story. Right. And, but I have to look at where each card is at. Yeah. And what it represents right in that story and that's been uh the goal and the challenge for me the last three four months i guess is learning to look at those and say what is your story mm -hmm. what are you telling me what am i feeling what's the question being asked to me that's the seem to me that's the key 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 for, that's the way i read cards yeah. so, so a lot of times and um, it's almost before i pick up the card i have a feeling and then that feeling needs is interpreted into the card. That's the way it works. Right? With that me, feeling it's is deck. I, I only like, use the If deck. I'm doing cards, I'll have, because I've got like five or six Oracle decks, because I really like the Oracle cards. And I've got three or four tarot decks. Mm -hmm. And I'll go ahead and I'll set them all out. Mm -hmm. And as I'm, you know, if we're doing mini reads or whatever, and I'll just kind of stop for a minute and I'll look and just be like, okay, they want me to use this deck. Oh, okay, they want me to use this deck. And so, mm -hmm. and I'll switch them out. And it still amazes me how they will fit together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And still tell that story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, so, and it's just, it's a learning curve. It's, it's learning, okay. trust my intuition. Well, look, so here I am in Mexico and I have a friend who I met a couple of years ago in Mexico and we WhatsApp and we uh, text. Um, I help him with English, his English. I help him more with pronunciation and with um, like common phrases and slang. Yeah. Hmm? yeah. And, but <clears throat> being down here, um, you know, I get better and better and better and better, but I have to continue to practice and I have to throw myself in it. Yeah. There's no way, you know, you have to allow yourself to be the kid in the pool who can't quite swim yet. And you've got that, that, that round tube thing. Mm -hmm. And you know, eventually I'm going to be able to swim and eventually I'm going to be able to go into the deep end of the pool. And, but right now, I, at least I'm in the pool. And I can observe the people who can dive, the people who can, I can observe it. So I'm sort of getting it like that. And that's right. just the way, you know, life is. Yeah. All right. So I think we've, um, we, we have covered the hangman for sure. And I've learned a lot. So have I. So, so yeah. And uh, my, my intuition said to ask you. I'm glad. You know, for this I'm, particular I, was, I was, I was floored when I got your emails, like, Oh wow! <laughs> and, uh, this card. And, uh, so, um, and I've had a lot of fun doing this. So good, good. So um, everybody, please subscribe. Shari H. Voices from the Swamp on YouTube. Yes. And the link will be on my thing. Okay. My thing. in the description box below. <laughs> Thank you. I learned that yesterday. <laughs> And um, I, we hope you all enjoyed it and, you know, keep on practicing the cards. You all have as much fun as we did making it. <laughs> and um, I, even though I call it Tarot Tuesday, sometimes it goes up Tuesday, sometimes it doesn't, whatever. 
Um, Tuesday is is inconsequential. <laughs> yeah. All right. So blessings, 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 and thank Many you, Sherry, very much all. for joining me. And thank now, you, Jeffrey, for inviting I'm me. Figure out how to um, stop the video, and then we can continue to chat, but we won't be online. Hang okay. Get, give me a minute. Okay. Um, Bye, sure. folks. <laughs> I'm going to share screen, stop video. Here we go. Still recording. I, Dios mio. <laughs> Jesus, I wish I knew how to do this. It's this new thing. It sucks. Whiteboard, share screen. Maybe just hit the record button again. Yeah, give me a minute. I'm, I'm in another menu. Oh. I don't know where the record button is. Well, I know when I look at it, it's at the very bottom. Yeah, well, they I, I upgraded and they missed oh. me. <laughs> Stop video. Nope. Okay, I'm going to end and then I think I'm going to come back. Okay. Okay. Uh, or, yeah, I don't know if I can come back. This is so stupid. You can always this edit. This is my upgrade. All right. I'm still on the free version with everything. <laughs> they kept on cutting me off. And I would have like a customer. You can't, you know, not good. Yeah. Apps, whiteboard, share screen, chat, participants. La, 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 la,